What's up guys, my name is Brandon and welcome back to the 58th Jailbreak Update episode and we have some awesome news to talk about today. So in this one, we're gonna be talking all about the latest developments in the iOS 11.3.1 Jailbreak and there have been a lot since the last episode. And speaking of the last episode, make sure you guys go back and watch the last episode, actually the past two episodes, if you don't wanna be lost in this video and if you wanna be completely up to speed, go back and watch both those videos before watching this one. I'll have those linked down in the description below and also in the cards up in the top right of the video. So let's kick this episode off with a bang and with some breaking news news from Ian Beer. Ian Beer just released the VFS exploit we've been waiting on for weeks. He tweeted out empty list, a proof of concept exploit for the Gitval iOS 11.3.1 kernel bug. And then he has a link to the website right there. Please read the readme file. So as you guys should know, a couple weeks back, Ian released a bug and an exploit for iOS 11.3.1 over on Twitter. The exploit required a paid developer account to compile and to install, but the bug, the VFS bug, did not require a paid developer account, but it had not been exploited at the time. And Ian Beer tweeted out on the Twitter that he was going to be working on on this and then he posts his progress in the coming weeks and now of course we do have that release and now that he finally has exploited that bug that means that we will not need a paid developer account for the future ios 11.3.1 jailbreak whatsoever now i'm going to continue talking about this vfs exploit and i'm going to talk about the readme what he wanted us to read in the readme file and basically what this exploit means and what's next later on in this video but first let's back up a little bit and talk about the developments with coolstar and electra before this release so a few days back coolstar tweeted this out 16 gigabyte device users may want to upgrade to higher storage due to how the upcoming jailbreak may work. 16 gigabyte devices will still be able to jailbreak, just expect more storage to be used up. On the flip side, I guess at least jailbreak detection won't be triggered when you reboot your device into non-jailbroken mode. Also, it should be much harder to boot loop non-jailbroken mode as root FS changes are reverted on reboot. And then just a few hours later, he said, update, we might be able to lower the disk size of 11.3 jailbreak, more research incoming. All mods outside of things installed from Cydia, DPKG, and APT will be deleted on reboot. Most forms of jailbreak detection will no longer work in unjailbroken states. And then two days later, Coolstar gave another update saying just tested on 11.2 and looks like 11.2 through 11.2.2 users at least will not have the file system issues that 11.3.x will have. So it's looking like the Electra jailbreak may actually take up more storage on 11.3.1 than it does on 11.2, which is pretty interesting. Now, of course, this is not a big deal unless you have a 16 and maybe even a 32 gigabyte device. If you don't have one of those devices, this isn't really anything to worry about. I just want to bring you guys the latest with this jailbreak. But if you do have a 16 gigabyte device, you're still going to be able to jailbreak. You just may not be able to have as many songs and pictures or whatever on your device. And then later that day, the Electra team tweeted out on Twitter saying this, Electra can now fully jailbreak iOS 11.2 through 11.2.6. The main issue right now is with the root FS remount. Once fixed, Electra will work up to iOS 11.3.1. And then just two days ago, Coolstar tweeted this out. Hello, 11.3.1 with a picture you can see here of a jailbroken iPad running an anemone theme. So this was obviously good to see that we had an iPad jailbroken on 11.3.1 running a theme and all that good stuff but then Coolstar followed that up with this. Cydia is broken on 11.3.1 and it's rather buggy but code injection and the root FS remount works. For those who use apt git or dpkg on the command line instead of Cydia those do work on iOS 11.3.1. And then just yesterday Coolstar said still having issues with the remount on 11.3.1 can't make too much progress until this is fixed unfortunately. Major issues from the remount include but are not limited to Bluetooth not working, passcode protected Wi-Fi networks and airplane mode toggle not working, Apple ID verification failing, camera app disappearing from the lock screen, and some others we probably haven't found yet. Looks like we might have to wait and see what Morpheus has planned for LibreIOS's 11.3.1 remount. The current public implementation that was provided for the remount is far too buggy to be usable. Worst case scenario, I do have an alternate solution that we can use for 11.3.1 if the issues with the non-persistent bypass can't be fixed. However, it will be a piece of crap and also would burn the zero day, unfortunately. So this is pretty interesting news coming from Coolstar and it really gives us a better look at the back end, you know, the work in progress that is creating a jailbreak. So basically, since there are remount issues with iOS 11.3.1 specifically, that means that we are seeing a slight delay in the jailbreak, but it's not something that's never going to be fixed. It will definitely be fixed. It's just taking a little bit longer than expected. And once again, this is a big reason that no jailbreak developer, no team will ever give an ETA for a jailbreak because there's always unforeseen, you know, issues like this. Now, all those tweets you saw from Coolstar and the Electra team were tweeted out before this VFS expert exploit got released by Ian Beer. Again, that just happened today. All those tweets were from before today. So now I know what you're thinking. Does this VFS exploit from Ian Beer that was just released today, does that mean that we'll have a fix for the remount issues in 11.3.1 just because this is a new exploit? 
The answer to that is no. The only benefit that the VFS exploit has over the other exploit is that it does not require a paid developer account. The remount issue that Coolstar has been talking about is actually in the software itself. It doesn't have anything to do with the actual exploit. And once again, Coolstar and the Electra team will be finding a workaround to this issue so that we do finally get the full jailbreak. Now let's go back to the tweet that Ian Beer tweeted out earlier today with the exploit release. You can see here that the link goes to the same page as before, but now he has the exploit linked in a comment. And here's an interesting little piece from the readme. Reliability. The exploit it does work, which was my goal. Reliability is something like 30% maybe. It all hinges on how quickly you can do the initial overflow and test loop. If something else comes in and allocates or frees the Calic 16, you can increase the probability that you corrupt a free list entry or something else and will panic. I'm sure the exploit can be made more reliable. I've only got to the point where I've demonstrated that this bug is exploitable. If you want to take this as a starting point and demonstrate how to improve reliability, I'd love to read a blog post. I imagine this would involve actually monitoring Calic 16 allocations and understanding understanding what the failure cases are and how they can be prevented. Success rates seem to be highest when the device has been rebooted and left idle for a bit. So yes, this VFS exploit is a little bit less reliable than the previous exploit, which did require a paid developer account, but again, as you read, the reliability can be improved upon. And hopefully we'll see Coolstar or somebody else work on that to improve the reliability of this exploit. But again, with everything considered, this is great news for the iOS 11.2 through 11.3.1 jailbreak. Again, we're super close to an iOS 11.3.1 jailbreak. We just need to remain patient. We're really just waiting on the remount issue to be fixed and also for the reliability to be improved with the exploit. And then we will have a fully working Electra jailbreak that does not require a paid developer account to install. And one last thing I wanted to say is that if you updated from iOS 11.2, Point two to 11.3 and now you're getting concerned about this issue and saying that you shouldn't have updated I would not jump the gun and say that yet you're probably going to be in just as good a shape as the 11.2 users when the jailbreak actually gets released so anyways guys that's it for this video I hope you did enjoy it make sure to hit that thumbs up button for this great news also make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future update videos so anyways guys thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon